Hey, howdy, hey, everyone. It's Siren Sun, your friendly neighborhood voice actor and storyteller. Uh, and as a celebration of my channel hitting nearly 30,000 subscribers, I decided that I was gonna sit down and try to be one of my hardest characters to act for y'all. Myself. <laughs> so, recently I asked on my Twitter, YouTube, and Patreon if any of y'all had some questions for a Q&A video I was making. And when I tell you I've gotten a plethora of different questions, I mean it. I've gotten questions ranging from the good, the bad, and the nitty-gritty. Um, so, without any further ado, uh, let's hop into exposing myself, because why not? <laughs> okay, so to start off, many, many, many people, like I can't even name one because there's so many, uh, asked, what made you want to start your channel? Uh, so, basically... I was, I recently got into the ASMR community and I was liking all these stories and like escapism and how I could just sit down and fall asleep or relax to a, a video and it actually feel like I was there. And then after a while of watching these videos over and over again, I sort of started running out of things to watch and I was like, hmm, if I don't have anything to watch, why don't I just make stuff? And so I decided to buy like a little microphone and get a little recording uh, app on my computer. And ever since then, I've been peddling out videos whenever I had free time. And that's sort of how I got started. Uh, many people again asked, uh, do you have your stories or plots pre-planned out or are you going to make them up as you go? And basically... It's sort of both. For the characters like Abel and Bryn and most of my earlier characters, I have their stories planned out like weeks and months in advance. But characters that are either commissioned and then end up becoming series because you guys like them so much, or characters that I just decided to be one-offs and just wanted to do it because I felt creative that day, those are characters that... If they did get um, a lot of attention, like uh, the Mafia video or Shay the Pirate Captain, those blew up really fast, and I'm so appreciative for that. And so I sort of winged their stories. But characters like Thresh in them, I've I've thought out the uh, the curves and twists and little plot hints I've hidden everywhere. So yeah, uh, yes and no to that question. Moving on. Um, a lot of you also asked, of your characters, who would be your favorite and who would be your favorite to voice act? So, of the characters I currently have that are mine, this is excluding some commissions, even though some of the commissions are still kind of like my ideas, I'd say my favorite character out of all of them would have to be either Bryn, Duke, or Thresh. Those are the, the three that hold a really, really special place in my heart because of how long they've been with me and how I've evolved these characters' stories and just how I've seen them grow. Those characters like my babies. Um, and my favorite to voice act, it's gotta be Duke. Uh, the little southern twang, the little country accent he's got is just... It, it, I live in the South, so it sort of rolls off my tongue a little easy. It's more closer to my natural accent, so it's, it's fun and it's easy to do, so that's why Duke's sort of my favorite. Alrighty, tidy. Um, these next few questions are actually from my Patreon, so shout out to all my Patreon peeps. Love you guys. And uh, Broke College Girl from Patreon asks, Is there one character you relate to most, or is there a bit of you in every character? I'd say a little bit of both. Um, there's a little bit of me in every character, uh, besides my voice, of course. But if I had to choose certain characters I related to the most, it would probably be Zeke and Cam. Here's a little origin tidbit, but the creation of them, uh, those two specifically, is actually a sort of allegory uh, for how I viewed myself back when I was younger. Cam was how I thought other people saw me, while Zeke is how I wanted to view myself. Like, Zeke is this really macho dude-dude, but Cam is this sort of introverted person with 
the stigma for having this sort of feature that he can't control. Um, not to say that I have, like, pink hair or anything, but it's sort of just, they both have a, a little significant meaning to me, and I hold that really close to my heart, and I love those two characters for that reason alone. But yeah, I do sympathize with those characters the most, but there is a little bit of uh, old Siren's son in every single character. If I voice act a character, that means I like that character. I'm not going to do a character that I don't like, because this whole channel is just my passion project. Uh, it's all a labor of love, and I actually find it very, very fun to do. So, um, yeah, it's... I do this all for you guys. Thank you all for supporting me, and I I am so blown away by all the support I've gotten. I did not think it was going to be that much, but you're showing your love to all these characters that I've been creating since I was like 10 years old, and it really just melts my heart with all the headcanons and little ideas and story tidbits you've created for yourselves with these characters, and it really just, as a storyteller and a creator, just makes me so happy. Alrighty, moving on. Talon from Patreon says, Do you like video games? What are you currently playing? Uh, and what are your three top games that you play nonstop? Um, I do play video games uh, a, a little bit. Um, what am I currently playing? Right now I'm playing Red Dead Redemption, Resident Evil Village, and uh, Rainbow Six Siege with a couple friends. Uh, I know, a little bit corny, but... Um, if I had to choose my top three games I would play non-stop, I freaking love Skyrim, Dragon Age, and Monster Hunter. Especially Skyrim. That is probably, in my, the, in my opinion, the greatest game ever created. I will play that for all times. It, the game is timeless to me. Like, it's an amazing game. You can probably tell that I like it so much because I have a lot of fantasy elements in my videos, but yeah, Skyrim is just, it, it is a complete gem. Um, Bell Arachne from Patreon asks, is being an ASM artist something you do as a hobby or a full-time career? As of right now, I'm sort of kind of like in between that thing because like, I started this as a hobby, like, I got bored one day and I was like, if I can't find any videos, hmm, I'll just create videos. But the Patreon has sort of exceeded my expectations and I have gotten so much support and love and it has been so amazing. I've been able to support myself um, with some of the Patreon money. I've been able to evolve my channel due to all of the generous donations that people have given me. It is... It is something that has completely blown away and quite literally changed my life. And I'm sort of not necessarily like using it as a career, but it is very much um, helping me along in life. And I'm so grateful for that. I didn't think you guys would love my content as much as you do. And I am thrilled. Jay from Patreon asks, What is your favorite D&D &D race and what is your favorite alignment? As far as races go, I have a very big soft spot for half-orcs and tieflings. I have more tiefling characters, so I guess that's my favorite of all, because there's just so much you can do with a tiefling. But if I had to choose an alignment, probably chaotic good. I don't know. I haven't really played many evil characters. Uh, Toasty Toast from Patreon asks, What kind of half-blood would you be? And which character series do you enjoy making the most? Ooh, if I had to be a Half-Blood. <laughs> Oddly, I have not thought about that question a lot. Um, which is weird, because I should have. I created them. If I had to be a Half-Blood, I'd probably be a Mermaid or Siren or something, because I have a very big love for like sea creatures and sea mythology, so that has been a big influence for the channel, and it's sort of where I got my name from, so yeah. And which series do I enjoy making the most? Ooh, probably Dukes, because the whole um, getting the perspective of how it is to live like a half-blood in the world of Arcanon or Altera, but... It has been so interesting to see all your reactions 
to like just the character, his backstory, um, how he reacted when um, the the guards showed up at the uh, the farm. It was all of your reactions sort of give me the gauge on how I'm doing and seeing how all the love you guys showed for that character has really reflected back on it and it's really made me very proud to have shown you guys Duke in the first place because he is a very near and dear character to my heart and I'm very excited whenever I get back to making his videos because doing his voice is just fun too. Uh, Jay Ashbran, oh hey Jay, um, she is the voice of Cassia if you uh, didn't know. Uh, she's an amazing ASM artist, go check her out, Jay Ashbran Audio Scripts. Um, she asks, which anime character is your spirit animal? <laughs> oh boy. Um, Yuga Aoyama from My Hero Academia. I just, I, I can't stop twinkling. <laughs> um, but uh, more realistically, on a close second, it would have to be Neji Huga from Naruto. But yeah. Moving on. V from Patreon asks... Do you have a self-care ritual for preserving your voice? Um, <laughs> moon bells, obviously. Uh, <laughs> not really. I mean, I don't really do anything that'll jeopardize my voice in the first place, so I like to stay within my safety range. Most people think I'm destroying my voice whenever I'm doing threshes, but I really just... It's, it's something I can naturally do, so... um. It's not really hurting me that much. Uh, I just drink a lot of water and um, to sort of achieve that natural rasp for like Aster and Thresh, I just sort of like uh, maybe like drink something thick or eat something thick that'll give me sort of that natural grunge. And so, yeah, I just I really don't do anything that'll strain me too much because this is evidently the moneymaker. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for all these questions from my Patreon, and if you're an adult, consider supporting me on a personal level. I, uh, I post an exclusive video once a week, and I post my art regularly there. Um, so yeah, go check it out if you haven't already. It's, uh, it's been helping me a lot. Uh, it's given me an incentive to help out the channel. It's really been an amazing experience, and I'm so glad I started it, and I'm so glad you guys love it. Alrighty, moving on to the Twitter. Addy Pixel asks, if a genie granted you three wishes, what would they be? Ooh. <laughs> I'm really, really indecisive. Okay, um, probably to end all violence between humanity uh, in all forms. Um, <laughs> to be able to get Netflix to sign me to turn Half-Bloods of Altera into a show. <laughs> Netflix, if you're out there, um, I'm waiting on my contract. <laughs> uh, just kidding. And, uh, hmm probably to find the one person out there who makes me a better version of myself if I haven't already. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for the question. It was a, that was a really good one. Uh, Akane from Twitter asks, out of all your characters you voice, which would you want to be brought to life the most? Oh yeah, definitely Zeke. Zeke and I would be good friends. And she also asks, who is your favorite character based on story or personality? Cam. Doing his little high-pitched voice also comes sort of naturally to me. It's just sort of uh, another one of the voices I just can do easily. And his personality is just so innocent, shy, bubbly, just carefree. Um, and it's really just sort of fun to sort of impersonate another character uh, that's very different from myself. So yeah, thank you Akane. Um, Mango Floof from Twitter asks, uh, when did my love for D&D &D begin? <laughs> when I found Critical Role Campaign 2. Uh, I was on vacation once, and I was about to go to sleep, and then my YouTube recommended, uh, showed me this little video of Campaign 2 funny moments, and I was like, huh, D&D? &D? What kind of nerdy crap? And then I watched it, and I'm like, oh, oh my. And, uh, now I geek out about it with all my friends. <laughs> uh, even if they want to hear it or not. Keith Chester from Twitter asks, Uh, how do I come up with my stories? I have a lot of free time. Uh, <laughs> or at least I did, but, 
uh, usually just whatever comes to the top of my head, I'll sort of see if I could fit into a character. If I feel like it's a great story, I'll workshop it some more, and if I like it, I'll end up turning it into a video, and if you guys like it, it'll end up becoming a series. So yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Wolf Pup asked, how cuddly am I? Yeah, that's the real question. Um, to put it into perspective, I'm a hugger. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just a voice from Twitter asks, do you ever find commissions from people to be a bit weird? <laughs> um, I don't want to call out any names or anything, but, uh, I've gotten a couple weird ones. Yeah, um, I'm not going to expose anybody, um, but I have gotten, uh, one for butt inflation. It was, um, yeah, it was very interesting. Um, <laughs> and the funny thing is, too, I, uh... I respectfully declined it, but as a prank to some of my other VA friends, I said, maybe go check out them, maybe they'll do it. Uh, I recommended a couple of my friends, and they, if they ever got a couple of weird emails for butt inflation, um, just know that I sent that person your way. <laughs> Next up, uh, Libby from Twitter asks, you have a lot of world building and lore throughout your channel. What is your favorite thing about world building? What is the most difficult? And is there a specific uh, world you plan to expand more? Hmm. I do plan on expanding uh, Altera or Arcanon, uh, the, that entirety of world. Um, I do plan on making that uh, more elaborated because that was entirely created by me. Um, there's only so far I can go with Grestenfell because it still abides by the rules of D&D &D because that's sort of my D&D &D world. And I do plan on unfolding the, uh, the stories behind West Haven because there is a lot, a lot of lore behind West Haven that I want to get to. It, I just don't want to throw it all at you super fast because it's going to hit you like a freight train. <laughs> What's my favorite thing about world building? Just being able to create something from nothing and then have people love it. <laughs> I love going through reading all the comments from the videos that I post. It really makes my day. And just seeing how much you guys love what I create makes me want to create more. Um, and what's the most difficult? Um, probably being able to tie... Uh, very specific things in to each uh, video and being able to get certain parts of the lore out that might not translate well into story but sounded good in my head. So that's probably the most difficult because most of these stories were originally intended to be novels but I decided to sort of port it over into audio stories because writing a novel is very hard. <laughs> I figured that one out the hard way. Alrighty. Foxmaiden739 from Twitter asks, What D&D class would you identify with? Cleric. For many, many reasons. Clerics are my favorite. Clerics are the greatest. Alrighty. Up next is Deja. Um, hey, another uh, ASM artist friend of mine. Uh, call me Deja on YouTube. Go check her out. She's amazing. Uh, Deja asks, If I were to die today... What would I be reincarnated as? Realistically, a peacock. Ideally, <laughs> Abel Deary and the Dragon King. <laughs> but yeah. Thank you all for your uh, amazing questions on Twitter. And for those I didn't get to, I'll just have to cover in the next Q&A. Uh, moving on to the, where the bulk of your questions have come from. Where the good, bad, and the ugly have uh, <laughs> all decided to pour out from. Uh, YouTube. Let's see how many I can uh, crank out here without uh, <laughs> getting this video past 20 to 30 minutes. Alexis H asks, Which one of your characters has exceeded your expectations as far as the love for the fanbase shows for them? Definitely Duke. Uh, Duke, I thought the little southern accent was going to be overdone and that nobody would probably watch that video and Bullman doesn't seem like a really uh, big title. But when you guys all got him past 50,000 views, I was like, okay, and it was fun for me because I love doing his voice, so I just get to give you more of Duke, and it's, it's fun for me. So, yay. Anime Fangirl asks, did you plan all the characters, plots, and fantasy worlds by yourself? 
Yes, like I mentioned before, um, it's a labor of love. I just love, in my free time, building more and more into the world, the stories, the characters and their stories. It's one of my favorite things to do. I just love creating things, and I'm just so glad that you guys all think um, they're amazing too. And I can't wait to continue on and keep building on to the worlds. Ari with Wings asks, When did you start drawing? Uh, about four years ago. Uh, I Again, I love being creative, so that was one of my first ways to uh, get out my creativity was drawing. So I basically made some most of these characters that you see now on my channel in art, and that's how they started their character story, was because I drew art for them, and then I started making the story around the art. Yeah. Aria Cross asks, What is your inspiration for the Divines? Um color coding and the need of a unique pantheon to explain certain uh, events that it can't be really explained otherwise, like the moon bells and all that jazz. I sort of needed like powerful higher powers and beings to sort of just, whenever something can't be explained, say, oh, a god did it. <laughs> so yeah, that and I'm a big fan of having everything coded by color, so they each get their own color, hooray. <laughs> Violet Jewel asks which of my characters is my least favorite to voice probably Grayson due to the lack of experience and he was my first ever character and I didn't really know what I was doing in the beginning of my channel I just did it for fun but his voice is sort of just very um, primitive compared to the more experience I've gotten. So, I mean, this still doesn't take away from him being a great character, and I know a lot of you love him. He's just not necessarily my greatest voice, in my opinion. Alan Quinn asks, Favorite time of the day? Uh, party time, obviously. <laughs> Lay Spark Voice asks, uh, Another friend of mine, uh, she did the mood board, she came up with Mel... Um, and I like to hide a lot of her little story hints sometimes uh, in the little backstory hints I give uh, in some of the videos. So yeah, a uh, good friend of mine. Go check her out. She has a YouTube channel. She uh, does a, a little ASMR series with one of the characters that actually takes place in my world. So go check her out. Um, she asks, will we ever get a Jace, Greg, Shane, Logan, or Judah storyline? You will be getting a Greg video uh, sooner than you think. <laughs> I actually uh, have already written the script out for it. I just got to voice act it. But uh, every now and then when I feel like bringing a backstory character and giving them their own video just for the uh, the wow factor, I'll probably bring one around. Um, sorta Kinda Maybe uh, asks, what's your zodiac sign? I'm a Gemini and I'm also a twin which I find very interesting. <laughs> I'm also indecisive, uh, impulsive, and very chaotic, so yeah, it fits. <laughs> Nagisa Masumi asks, which character do you see yourself as personality-wise? Um, there is a background character named Keon. He was at the beginning of the Duke video and in the, uh, the prom video. Basically, that's my stand-in. I don't even have to act when I'm playing him because... I just get to be myself, and that's what I love about the character. That's why I sort of feel a kindredness with him. Uh, Mila asks, is West Haven a high school or a college? It's neither a high school nor a college, and yet both a high school and a college. It depends on who the listener is, because I know a lot of people um, of both age groups watch my videos. Um... And so I l purposefully left that ambiguous, just so... People of older ages don't have to be like, oh, I'm listening to high school characters. And people of younger ages don't have to be like, oh, I'm listening to adults. So I sort of left it ambiguous and up to the listener. Uh, Brogdon C. asks, can we have a face reveal? Get me to one million, then we'll talk. <laughs> uh, and as far as that goes, that's all the questions I have for you now. I hope you enjoyed this little Q&A session. I sure did. And thank you all so much for supporting my channel, and leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, see you in the next one.